Hello everybody, my name is Spoons Rattling, and welcome to this video where we're going to be using AI instructions to paint a miniature. The first steps were to gather supplies and prep the miniature with primer and cleaning off mold lines and such, which I obviously already did. They recommended painting white, which I'm not exactly sure why, but it's not necessarily a wrong step. They recommend a base coat with ultramarine blue, which isn't a color GW sells, but a McCrag blue is as close to the old ultramarine blue as a as I, as le at least to my eyes it is. You're going to want to apply this in probably three thin coats. This color doesn't apply very well over white. From here, after you get that even base coat, as you can see here, the next step they say is to do the armor highlights. They recommend mixing in white, which is, again, not wrong, though not generally what I would do. And then to edge highlight, as you normally would. Uh, this Cataphracti Terminator is pretty easy to edge highlight, as most of his edges are extremely hard and jaggy, so you can just use the edge of your brush, as you can see me doing here. I used cheap synthetic brushes for all of this. Then next up is to use gold, and since my I don't have any Retributor armor, I had to use uh, gold ink, or rather, umber ink mixed with silver ink to make gold, which is very close to Retributor armor from uh, the Games Workshop line of paints. This applied in one or two coats and is quite a rich color, and I quite like it. However, I generally still prefer Retributor armor. Here you can see me applying it to the trim of everything, and even though it's quite watery by its very nature, it's actually pretty easy to control, and any mistakes were easy enough to fix. The next step was an interesting one. It says to paint black details like gun barrels, pouches, and belts using a thinned black. Now, I'm not exactly sure why it wants me to paint the gun barrels, but I'm not really going to argue that it's a bad step. It's more just sort of a questionable step that would be avoided if we just primed black. However, again, nothing wrong with that step. It's just sort of strange, as I'd expect. And I, of course, applied this to the belt, and since I'm painting a Cataphracti Terminator, I believe they're called Terruges, something like that. Uh, the uh, dangly tassels on his shoulder pad and on his dangly crotch bits. Uh, I also painted those black since they are technically belts, but uh, there was no other step that involved them, so I figured this would be the best place to apply it. Now the next step is to paint the eye lenses, and they of course recommend using a red or a similar bright color, and then painting a black line, which very much confused me. And at first I was thinking, oh, I'm not going to do that. But then I remembered, oh, I'm trying to follow this to a T. So I figured after I'd get that nice beaming orange, orange is red, in the eye sockets, I would uh, get some thinned black paint and try to do that, which they say represents a reflection, which I don't really get. But uh, as you can see, this really just looked like a mess, and I immediately regretted trying it. However, I was not one to go against them, but I did remove this step. <laughs> I simply couldn't live with it, it looked too terrible, and I felt like I was doing them a disservice at that point. Next is to just do the metallics on uh, weapons and similar bits, but for this guy it's mainly just the weapons and the uh, mechanical bits on his uh, power pack, I believe technically, maybe, even though it's built into the Terminator armor. You know what I mean with these guys. You can see these guys are built a little weird, that's because I built them for 9th edition and at the moment don't really have a use for them, so I've simply decided to paint them up in, uh, you know, just use them for videos. They're quite fun models, even though they're probably my least favorite mark of Terminator armor. I much prefer uh, Tartarus or especially Indominus, which is my absolute favorite. Uh, we'll actually be painting those soon. I'm going to do a challenge where I try and paint all of my uh, Leviathan Space Marines in 24 hours. That'll be fun, won't it? Regardless, that about wraps this up aside from basing, and one interesting step I didn't think they'd recommend, which was weathering. Now, I used a classic technique of mixing up a lighter color and using a sponge, but you could weather however you want. But uh, this is a, a step that I don't see in a lot of tutorials, at least like for a general paint scheme, which I think is actually interesting, is weathering can add a nice uh, extra bit of texture to your paint job, which is always nice. And now we're on to the Games Workshop part of this video. We're going to be following their tutorial on how to paint Ultramarines that they recently released with the release of uh, the Leviathan box set, obviously. Uh, painted on the same model with a slightly different pose, but they're honestly very close. 
They recommended basing with Macrag Blue Spray, but I didn't have that and I wasn't going to buy it, so I simply applied Macrag Blue with a brush over everything. Then the first step they said was any to fill out any black details, including the uh, weapons. So I painted in the uh, weapons black, the uh, joints of the armor black, and any details like that, really. Just anything that's going to either have a metallic base coat or just needs to be black because that's the color it traditionally is. From there, once you apply the black, the next step is to actually apply the uh, golden details. I used the same gold that I did for the uh, previous model, uh, but you're just going to want to apply this to any of the sort of decorative bits. For this guy, it's all the trim, but for a modern day Terminator, it would be things like uh, little trinkets or the Aquila on their chest. They also recommended Balthasar Gold for the smaller trinkets, but this guy didn't have any, but I still wanted to incorporate the color, so I made his belt buckle Balthasar Gold, which is a very deep sort of red gold, I think is the best way I could put it. Brown gold, maybe. Regardless, it's another one of my favorite paints. GW does know how to make very good metallics, I will say. Then they, of course, recommend painting the helmet white for veterans, which this guy is a veteran. Obviously, the first company to get these white helmets. Here I'm using white ink because it's simply easier to use than uh, white paint, and I don't actually have any pure whites that I particularly like painting with uh, for at least this tight corner. I, I don't mind using them usually, but it's just easier to use ink in this situation. It's much stronger. It applies in two coats, as you can see. We're almost done with the armor from here. The next steps are uh, just sort of... Uh, lightening things up after applying our last base coat, which is uh, Mephiston Red for any cloth and the eyes. Uh, this is obviously a step that the AI instructions clearly forgot, but uh, it's, again, not the end of the world. However, the red does add a, light, a nice bit of uh, discord, as it's known, to the color scheme as well as complementing the blue kite. Well, I applied this to the uh, Terouges and the dangly crotch terouges, or tassels if you want to be a, a cowboy about it. And I just used Mephiston Red, uh, thinned down, of course, as it's quite a thick paint, though uh, the color's quite nice, of course. And from there, I believe we've done all of our base coats, and all that we have left to do is actually apply the washes. Now, we're actually not doing an all-over wash, we're simply using Agrax Earthshade on the gold bits and the red bits, just to add some extra shading to them. Uh, now this is you would use as any other wash. Have a little bit of water mixed in and then just apply it over all the metallic bits and it'll uh, really cling to the uh, recesses, as you'd expect from the wash. And also, it just really, something about brown washes on gold really just brings it all together, I think at least. It's one of my favorite effects that's so easy to do. Uh, here you can see me applying it to the uh, Tay Rouges. The next step, they actually recommend a pin wash or a recess shade. Now I'm still learning this skill, so some of my lines are a little fat, but we use a Basilicanum Gray, or Gravelord Gray, which is an alternative that I'm using, to uh, fill in the recesses. So starting on these uh, leg bits in the back, you can see me using a smaller brush and just running it into the uh, recesses as best I can. Of course, occasionally you'll get a very nice one like I did on that rim, or you'll get one that's too fat like I did on this rim. However, with the way this paint works, it's not the most noticeable. From here, all that's left to do is paint on that lead belcher, which surprisingly didn't get a wash uh, outside of the recess shade, uh, which is a little uncommon for me. I usually only use washes on my metallics. From there, you're just going to want to apply two thin coats over this, uh, the combi bolter, the lightning claw, and his uh, power pack. Again, all the mechanical bits on his back, as you can see there. As you can see, here are the two finished results. While the AI certainly did an admirable job, it missed some details and also had some questionable choices on instructions. So I do think that I don't think that my job's necessarily in jeopardy of being replaced too soon. However, it's certainly a fun little experiment. I might try this again later and see if I can't get some really crazy results and follow those. You know, it's just some sort of, a, you know, a little bit of a gag video. Regardless, I've been Spoons Rattling. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.